My name is Laura Saget. I'm primarily a sculptor. I also paint. I have experimented with performance and video and sound, but I keep coming back to sculpture. Most recently, I've been working in glass, bronze, stone, and with organic matter. My practice is really like being a scientist. It's seeing what can happen when I put things together that don't necessarily belong together. My process is really putting together like a set of situations or a set of circumstances where the materials can teach me something. And I've found encasing different things in glass, they all break down differently. There's a pattern of incompatibility or just like a pattern. What happens when you heat things up to the point where they no longer hold whatever form they once had? And that's really where I feel like a scientist in that exploration. I think of my practice very similarly to how I think of my spiritual practice. Basically, when everything breaks down, it's ultimately the same. I have been painting since I was, I don't even know, like four. I was trained starting at like seven. I went to this place called Mission Renaissance where they teach you how to paint like a Renaissance master. I felt like I was restricted and I didn't understand A, why I was like copying people and B, why there were so many rules. But then when I went to college, I had a professor who was my painting professor. She was like, you don't have to fit it onto the canvas. Like, it's okay. I really needed to be told <laughs> that it was okay. That permission was, I guess, what I needed that first year of college. And then from there, when I was in grad school, my school had a relationship with urban glass. I could just experiment with glass and make whatever I wanted to make. In the glass world, there are steps. You have to learn how to do it the way that it's supposed to be done. I kind of pushed up against that a lot, so I had so many pieces break, because I was like, I don't understand why this can't happen. Joshua Reifey. I think he was my first or second glass teacher, I can't remember. But I was like, I want to put this like giant boulder, basically, in glass. And he was like, okay. I taught a casting class, which is one of my favorite classes to teach because it's very creative, it's very free form. I like to make it very collaborative. It's really letting creativity fly. It's always like, what do you want to do? And people say something crazy, and you're like, okay, let's figure out how to do it. That's kind of like our relationship now, actually. Come with something crazy, <laughs> and it can't be done, and then we try to like rein it in and like pull it together until we can find something that we can actually accomplish. Do. I was like obsessed with the rock, and he was doing this. Also obsessed with neon in glass. We basically combined our two interests, mm -hmm. where we put neon and sea life in glass and lit it up. And like some of the effects were crazy. Crazy. It was just like, how the hell can I put rock in glass, have the glass not break? Because technically speaking, it's a real issue. We would have some success, a one out of eight maybe, or like something like that something success like that. rate, mm -hmm. which is good, like oh. it's not terrible. What we have in common is we're both trying to do things that are supposed to not be allowed, that are like supposed to be impossible. We're definitely both trying to do that. Where we differ is I'm more focused on like, how are we gonna do it? <laughs> and Laura's more like, go, 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 let's, let's move. <laughs> I'm not great at math, really, which is partially a strength because I'm like, I have a feeling that this is somehow gonna work. I can't tell you why, but like, I think that there's something here that we can do. And it works, <laughs> like it always works. 
You've been blowing glass for how long? Like 13 years. 13 years. I'm not a professional glass blower by any means. But honestly, a lot of times that's more that's a gift. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's hard for me sometimes to make things that aren't, you know, crispy. I'll make it messy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of similar, like the logic and then like the, what's gonna happen? It's mm -hmm. like, you have like the structure, yeah. the clean. It's a metaphor, it's a perfect <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, let's make it crazy. Yeah. It's a perfect nice. collaboration. Yeah. It really is, because it's like we have the opposite things and the same interest, which is really doing what everybody says you can. Community is essential to the making of the glass because you can be like Bill Gutenrath and do it solo, but there's no fun in that and it's very limiting. And it's not only with other glass blowers, it's with other people. You know, it's such a great medium for collaboration and for community building. I do some things on my own, but usually my ideas are not a one person idea. There's nothing like the feel of that molten glass. That's true. It's magical. Yeah. If we could freeze that. That glowing orange, yeah. It's just like fire. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's got a life to it. It's like a living animal when you're working with it. It picks up on the energy. It cracks if people are freaking out. When people are angry or like, you know, you're having a day where everything's breaking. Yep. And if you like really let that run the show, the glass is gonna break, which I think is just perfect because I mean, isn't that like in life, like the best lesson? Nowadays I'm a little bit less, actually a lot less like, let's do a really risky thing because I've probably gotten burned too many times. I mean, honestly, after injuring myself, I've learned a lot about how like I cannot come from that frenetic place. If I do, I'm gonna A, hurt myself, <laughs> and B, make nothing, make a whole bunch of broken stuff. The practice is experimenting, doing things that maybe don't necessarily belong together. But like I'm interested in doing it in a way that's not counter the elements themselves. The idea is, but the means, I'm more interested now in working with as opposed to like against. And then I can be clearer what I'm in the practice of making and I can actually pay attention to like what these materials are telling me. Because like the glass is very vocal when I pay attention to it. I really don't need to do much except pay attention and then do whatever needs to be done in that moment. The solution will be brought forward.